The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Good morning. My name is Dr. Shalee Sammons, and I appreciate you coming to our talk uh, hosted by GenScript entitled Tips of the Trade, Recombinant Protein Expression, Purification, and Techniques. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Shalice, and I am the marketing specialist for the protein expression services at GenScript. I would like to go ahead and introduce our speaker today, um, who is uh, Dr. Ellie Liu. She is a senior scientist for the protein production department at GenScript. Ellie has received her bachelor's degree in molecular biology at the University of Liverpool and her PhD degree in structural biology at Burbank University of London. She has extensive experience in membrane pro protein expression, purification, and crystallization. And her main role at GenScript is to support the transient gene expression platform. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to our speaker, Dr. Ellie Liu. Thank you, Shalice. Thank you for your introduction. And good morning, everyone. My name is Ali. Thank you for coming to my talk. During today's talk, I'm going to give you a brief introduction of transit gene expression in mammalian cells. Then I will focus on the high density system. Comparing to our previous standard expression system, a much higher expression level can be achieved with this new high density expression system. So at the end of my talk, I will address some of the challenges we have encountered in the past and show you how we managed to solve these problems. Well, I'd like to start, oops, I'd like to start uh, my talk with the definition of transfection. So what is transfection? Transfection is the process during which foreign DNA is transferred into nucleus of the eukaryotic cell. Okay, so there are two types of transfection, stable transfection and the transit transfection. And today, we will only focus on the transit, trans, uh, transit transfection. The, during the transit transfection, the foreign DNA will not get incorporated into the host genome, but the target gene is expressed for a limited period of time. So, okay. Then probably one gonna ask how to transfer DNA into an eukaryotic cell. So in gene scrape, we normally use reagent-based transfection methods. As we know that the cell membrane is negatively charged, without the presence of reagent, negatively charged DNA will be repelled from the cell. So for the cells to take DNA, the overall net charge needs to be positive. That's why reagent is required. So the main principle behind this is the reagent gives DNA a positive, a net positive charge, either by binding to the DNA or by forming a complex with the DNA. So I will use pay here as an example. So as we all know, like pay is a well-known cationic polymers. Um, it will form a DNA, it will form a DNA uh, reagent complex. So by doing so, pay neutralized the positive charge, oh, sorry, neutralized the negative charge of the DNA. This will result in a net positive charge of the complex. And also, pay condense the DNA for effective uptake. Okay, so after knowing what is transfection and the reagent-based transfection methods, I'd like to show you the overview of trans transit expression. So we can divide it, this process into four steps. Cell preparation, complexation reaction, cell transfection, and additional uh, feed and enhancer. So for the first step, what we do is, uh, what do you want to do is like, you want to expand the stock cell to a, a certain volume, for example. If you are planning to grow a one liter culture, 
you will expand the cell, the stock cell, to a roughly a similar volume. And once, once the cell reach a certain volume, what do you do before the transfection experiment? You need to dilute the sample, the cell uh, to a certain cell density. So for this cell density varies from cell to cell. So the optimum transfection density can be found in most of the product manufacturing. And once you finish the cell preparation and dilute the cell to the optimum transfection density, what you need to do next is to generate a DNA reagent complex. So this is the most important step, I would say. Um, so why? It's because the complex the complex in time, the time when you mix DNA and uh, reagents and how long it takes, it's crucial because a too long uh, time uh, will result in a too big complex, which will uh, lower the transfection efficiency. And also, another important factor is the nucleic acid quality. So if you you have a high purity of DNA and low endotoxin level of your DNA, these are desired, okay? Because uh, endotoxin contaminant DNA inhibits transfection or, lo uh, or lower the transfection efficiency. So once you have finished these two steps, what do you do is simply mix the cell together with the DNA reagent complex and the cell will then be grow at a suitable temperature. In order to achieve higher expression level, usually extra feed and enhancer will be added to the culture after transfection. And the feed provides uh, nutrition while the enhancer inhibits the cell growth so that the cell will use nutrition to produce your target recombinant protein rather than some host proteins that are important for cell growth. Okay, so how the TGE service work for, looks like in GeneScript. So usually we will start from codon optimization on the basis of the expression cells choose. So once we synthesize the gene, we will subclone it into the expression vector. And for different cells, the vector will be different. And at this step, you also can choose different tags uh, you preferred for, for your protein. And once we finish that, what we will do is for new uh, proteins, we will perform a small scale expression uh, test just to see, uh, just to determine the protein expression level and to estimate the protein purity after one step purification. So um, here we also offer a service called HTP service, high throughput screening service. So this screening, I will mention it later at the end of my talk, is suitable for screening several uh, constructs at the same time with a relatively shorter time and the low, low cost. And once we finish the small scale expression test, and we know the, and if the result is promising, we will perform a large scale expression to get more protein for your downstream experiment. And we are capable for, to scale up to 100 liter. And also we can reach, re, uh, we can reach low endotoxin level and some of our projects we reach the introduction level lower than 0.1 EU per make. So that's how it is. So after, uh, after we finish the production, we will do the QC and we have a lot methods like uh, HPLC, mass back, and you can choose what you decide for your projects. Okay, let's move on to my second part. 
Uh, I'm sure a lot of us are familiar with uh, Hack 293, Hack 293, 6E cells, and 3E7 cells. So today I'd like to show you our new high density expression system, and I will uh, compare them with the normal Hack 293 and the Cho cells. So uh, I will compare them in the following aspects, like the yield, protein activity, and glycosylation pattern. So from now on, I will refer these normal cells as our standard system. Well, for the high density system, these are cells, um, they are derivatives from, of normal HAC cells, HAC293 cells, or normal CHO cells. They are not engineered. So researchers simply screen around these normal cells and pick those cells with a higher um, transfection efficiency and higher productivity. And the reason why they are called high density, because the transfection cell density and the cell growth density of this high density system are higher than a normal system. That's why we call them high density system. The, uh, when you express proteins with this high density system, it is highly recommended to use this high density vector. In that way, you can achieve the maximum expression level. And for the standard system, it is recommended to use this expression, uh, expression vector called PTT5, what we use to reach the maximum expression level. So you're probably going to ask, why should we use high-density system? Well, the most, uh, the most important answer or the reason going to be it gives a pretty good expression level. As you can see from these slides, like the expression level is improved largely. Some of them even improved more than 100-fold. So we simply change the expression cell from the standard system to HD system, and you can see from non-visible at the beginning, the target protein is non-visible, and once we change to the high density system, it, it is visible from the SDS page. And this is just the super latent of the culture. And then also you can see once we purify the protein, it's a huge difference. And so another reason is you're probably going to worry about um, whether the quality of your protein will change. And also, after all, it's a different, there are different cells, whether the glycosylation profile is going to change. But our experience tells us uh, proteins expressed in the HD system show, high, uh, show comparable binding affinity. You can see here, similar binding affinity, and also share a similar glycosin profile to that of the standard system. So I would say there's no worry about that, to worry about the protein quality. And in the past year, we have more than 100, sorry, more than 1,000 proteins expressed in our high D system. And we have I'm very confident and proud to say that we're doing a good job. We have seen many proteins have their expression level above 10 mg per liter. Some of them even reach to 300 to 400 mg per liter. And for antibody, the highest yield we achieved is 850 mg per liter. So this expression level is absolutely comparable with the stable cell line. So if you are at an early age of your experiment and you still screen around different constructs and you don't want to spend a lot of money and time to generate a stable cell line or cell pool, definitely try this HD system. It won't let you down. Okay. Uh, so I'm go going to talk ab uh, about, in my third part of my talk, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, some cases or some challenges we encountered and also 
I'd like to first quickly show you our facilities and our experiences. So, so far, we have handled like more than 10,000 badges of proteins, more than 2,500 badges of antibodies. And, we, and you can see these, uh, these proteins are from all kinds of different families and we have relatively high success rates. Um, so in the past year, we managed to purify some, oh, this is some examples of these proteins we successfully expressed. And in the past year, I, we managed to purify some of the TG, proteins from TGF beta family. So you can see on the left panel here, uh, we managed to purify tag free TGF beta 1 protein, and this is an active and is the tameric C terminal domain of the TGF beta 1. And also, we managed to uh, express and purify a full length human AMH protein. And again, this is in a dimeric form. And we offer some free adequates for your initial activity tests. And if you are interested and uh, you can contact us we can provide some uh, free adequates and if you just, if the protein quality is satisfied you can contact us and place an order and here some here are some examples of the interleukins we have ex, uh, we have expressed and successfully and again we have three small adequates and you can ask us contact us we will send it to you. So these are some pictures of our facilities and labs we work in. Um, okay, so let's move on to the most exciting part. So here I listed some challenges we encountered. I'm sure most of us are familiar with it. So low yield, low purity, protein degradation, protein aggregation, and sometimes we need to express a receptor complex. So how can we do that? So uh, I'm gonna uh, I gonna show, explain them and discuss them case by case. So first, like if you have a low yield. Like I mentioned in the second part, uh, what we can do is just try the um, HD system. The HD system really gives a good expression level, but here I'd like to emphasize, it is very important to make sure that your protein is simply have a low expression e issue. So this means your protein is well secreted, no secretion issue, your protein doesn't have any aggregation, degradation, or stability issue. In that scenario, by changing the, the cell to HD, HD system, it is very likely you can improve your largely. However, if your protein have some other issues, so it's very important to know and to understand what is the main problem first, rather than just simply change the cell. So if it's not just expression issue, um, just be careful. Sometimes things doesn't work like this and you cannot simply change the cell to a different cell and expecting the yield improve dramatically. So when we're talking about a sample purity, his tagged protein sometimes can be an issue because we all know normal like his column doesn't have a high specificity to the his tag. So what we have here, you can see these two proteins at the beginning is just a mess. You cannot use this sample for any experiments. So what do we have here in gene scripts? We generate our new column, we design it, and then this new his column has especially high specificity to the his tag. So you can see we didn't change anything, but we just changed the column to our new column. 
and there's a huge improvement from sample purity. And you can see from the value is 20% purity to 80% purity. And by doing so, we made something, made this protein useful. And the third issue can be the protein degradation issue. And then you can see, because when you express protein in mammalian cells, because the cell, the culture needs to be maintained at 32, 30, 37 degree, if the protein is not stable, most likely you will get these degradation fractions. So uh, how to minimize this degradation? degradation products. What do we have here? Yes, we change the way how we culture the cell and how we express the cell. So, and you can see after we change the method, how to culture the cell, we minimize, largely min minimize the degradation products. And at the end, we managed to purify the target protein with only a small fraction of the degradation, a small portion of the degradation products. Um, okay, so the fourth problem is the aggregation issue. So here is quite it's quite important thing is like you need to know what causes the aggregation. Sometimes it can be the protein itself. Sometimes it can be the glycosylation, and sometimes it can be because you put a tag at the wrong place or use the wrong tag. So for example, for example one, if you see something like this and it's like really smear and you got lots like smear bands and all of them show like a signal from the Western blots, then you know there's something caused by the glycosylation issue. Or what do you need to do? Change to the cell which doesn't have the end glycosylation or you can try different types of cell like Sometimes Cho and 293 cell, they do have slightly different glycosylation profile. Um, you can try different cells and just it may solve the problem. And sometimes, as I mentioned, it can be the protein. And if the protein aggregated, one thing you can do is to add a tag which improves the protein solubility and stability, like we did here. So by doing so, at least you get some to get a protein rather than an ag aggregation products. Okay, then last issue. Sometimes we need to ex express receptor complex because some like um, MHC class proteins, these receptors are are finite beta chain complexes and also some interleukin. Uh, proteins they are complex so how can we express a complex one method is shown here like we subclone the alpha and the beta chain into two vectors and we express them in one to one ratio and uh, by doing by like purify this complex with one tag you can like get a complex and in that way, if that works, it's, it will be wonderful. But sometimes you do, this, this method do have some issues because very likely one chain may express very well and while the other one doesn't express well or don't express at all. So one possible reason is that these two chain needs to be, uh, needs to form a complex. Without the other chain, the chain cannot be stable by itself. So this is always, this is the case for many receptors that you get aggregations for one chain and no expression for the other one, or aggregation for both of chain and things. They just cannot form proper complex. So what can we do? Here is an alternative map.
Um, hey, Dr. Liu, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, I think you've been muted. Can you uh, repeat the slide one more time? No, I'm sorry, we still can't hear you. Is that my computer? Okay, no, it's not just fine. Um, yeah. Oh, the offer and the base. There you go. Yes, you're coming back. Sorry? Yes, no, we can hear you again. Okay. okay, so these slides or the next one? Um, or even you can start with this one. Okay. Okay, thank you. So uh, for the receptor complex, a common method we use is we subclone alpha and beta chain into two vectors and uh, we co-express these two proteins in one-to-one -one ratio. So we hope that once you express them in one-to-one -one ratio and they will form complex by itself within the cell. And sometimes it do works and you can see by this protein, we purify them with the heat tag and we can pull down the whole complex and with high purity, uh, with only one step purification. However, sometimes this method doesn't always work because uh, one possible possible thing is like one chain expressed extremely well, while the other one doesn't have expression at all or very low expression. So you you won't get a lot of protein to form a complex. Instead, you will get a monomer of one chain, and most likely this monomer chain is like aggregated or doesn't in a good good condition. So how can we solve this? So this is another an alternative method. Instead of having two plasmids, you can clone both chain into one single plasmid by joining them in a, with a P2A sequence. So this is a cell cleavage sequence. So what will happen is like we see the cell a single mRNA will be generated. So it will start from a single peptide until the end of his tag. So the mRNA contains both chains. During the translation process, the ribosome will translate chain A first, and once it reaches to P2A, it will cleave at this site and continue uh, the, the translation of chain B. So the end products will be two separate chain. However, because they are uh, physically located closely to each other and they are in one-to-one -one ratio, it's very likely, it's more likely for these two chain to form a complex comparing to the previous methods. So if your protein doesn't work very well for the first one, you can try this method. And this is an example we managed to purify the protein Complexing that way, and you can see it's in good condition. Okay, so after all my talk, you're probably gonna ask, What should I do? What is the best method for my protein? Because every protein is different. How, how can I know which, which cell is the best, which method is the best? So, here is the HTP service, as I mentioned earlier. Um, so what we, you can do first is you contact us. We have this experienced project manager. If we have experience with this protein, we can provide you, you like our uh, suggestions. And if it's really tricky, difficult protein, what we can do is we set up like pilot experiments in a very small scale and we do one step purification. And uh, as you can see, because this machine is fully automated. So all what we do is we'll put sample here and this machine will purify the protein for us and with these needles or separate needles. So there's no cross contamination and also the whole environment is 
isolated and controlled. So the endotoxin level for is extremely low for this protein. So so far, for all the proteins purified with this machine, the endotoxin level is lower than one EU can make. And also because this is an automatic machine, so we can perform like 32 to 64 samples per day, and also like with relatively cheap price and it's cost effective for you. If you are thinking to screen around mutations, trans uh, truncations and different cells, different tags, well, uh, you can try this HTP service. Okay, thank you for everyone. Thank you for uh, coming to my talk. And if you have any questions, please uh, enter the, send me the questions and uh, I will go through them and answer the questions later. And now I will pass this to my colleague, uh, Shalise. Hey, Ellie, thank you so much for your talk. Yes, as she mentioned, we're gonna have a question and answer session after the talk. Uh, so please put your questions in the question box and we will go through them and go ahead and answer them. Uh, but before then, while everybody's writing their question, we are going to go over, uh, just for a couple minutes, some of the services that Ellie kind of highlighted. So, Ellie, if you could please slide through. Thanks. Okay, so the first service Ellie mentioned was our high-density transient protein expression. As she mentioned, we have the service available in uh, HEK cells and NCHO cells. Uh, you can also uh, do a combination expression evaluation to compare the regular versus the high, de uh, high density. And you can get yield improvements ranging up to 100-fold. Uh, the turnaround time for this is about uh, 10 weeks, and we start from gene sequence all the way to your uh, recombinant protein or antibody. Um, and then the figure on the right is just kind of showing a different mono, uh, recombinant antibodies and how the expression differs between a regular cell line and this high density cell line. So next slide. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, and then also Ellie mentioned our high throughput gene to antibody service. Um, so this is our accelerated service platform that she just went over. So just a couple highlights about the service is that the turnaround time for this is about four weeks. We do one-step affinity purified um, antibody as a deliverable, and we start with your antibody sequence. And below is just the workflow of how we do that. So we do sequence evaluation, we do plasma prep and cloning, all of this in-house, expression, purification, and then delivery. The next slide. Thank you. And last but not least is our uh, transient protein expression. So uh, this is just our regular protein expression service. So we do sequence of protein and recombinant antibody, and uh, we will do the gene uh, subclony expression vector, um, small cell transfection expression, and, and then we can do scale up if necessary. So we can scale between 100 milliliters to 10 liters um, at competitive prices. And again, every project we do is customized based on your specifications and your requirements. So if you have any questions about these services or more, please feel free to check the websites underneath each slide or to check our website at www.genscript.com. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to my colleague, Dr. Jody Kinghorn, who will talk about some of the products that Ellie went over today to help you with your protein expression. Okay. Thank you, Shalise. Um, and uh, we can go to the next slide, Ellie. Thanks. Um, so yes, my name is Jyoti Kinghorn, and I will give a little bit of an um, introduction to the products that uh, we use and which are also available on our website. Um, so we have different types of um, resins, um, which you can pack in your own columns, uh, pre-packed columns uh, for different resins, um, uh, which are compatible for ACTA uh, purification and FPLC, as well as magnetic beads for protein purification for um, large volumes or for high throughput. Uh, protein purification. So um, at this link on the slide, you can see the uh, protein purification products that we have. Um, if you want to try some of them, you can request free samples or um, send us an email at product at genscript.com. Um, next slide, please. 
Yes, so for antibody purification, um, we provide different types of resins. We have um, affinity purification based protein A, protein G, and L resins. Our featured resin product is monofinity A resins, which are uh, protein A resins where protein A has been mutated to be alkaline resistant. So the re resin can be washed with um, NaOH um, multiple times and be reused. And um, like I said, it's available um, in ACTA compatible 1M and pre-packed uh, 5 ml columns. Um, next slide, please. So for tag protein purification, um, such as histidine tag or GST tag, flag tag, or biodenylated proteins, we also supply um, resins. Um, next slide, please. And then finally, we have magnetic beads. Um, these are um, uh, products for quick protein purification with large volumes. And like I said, if you had large number of samples or had high throughput uh, sample purification needs, magnetic beads um, are available for protein A, protein G, as well as uh, with both protein A and G for antibody purification. And we have a nickel charge mag beads for histidine um, tag protein uh, purification, as well as glutathione mag beads and streptavidin mag beads. For more information on these products, you can go to our website and the links are given here. And thank Thank you so much. Um, and with that, I'll give the presentation to Sharice. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, just so you're aware that this presentation and the slides will be available on our website at www.genscript.com. So please feel free to check there. Uh, in a couple of days, we will have the webinar up and the slides available. OK, so with that being said, we are going to go ahead and go through some questions. Um, so one question we have, uh, Dr. Liu, is which column did you use to optimize the yield? Which column? Oh, OK. So thank you for your question. Uh, which column we use to optimize the yields? Well, we, so for, during my talk, I mentioned is like we use high density system, like different type of cell. To, ex to improve the yield, but we don't have specific column to improve yield. However, like I mentioned for the purity part, so we have special his column we designed, Gene Square Pass, which can improve the uh, uh, purity of his target protein. In that way, you sort of improve the final yield of your target protein. Hope this answers your question. Great. Um, so we have a couple more questions. And if anybody has additional questions, please put them in the question box and I will go through them. So another question we have is during the protein degradation part, you mentioned changing uh, your uh, cell culture conditions. Can you kind of give some examples about what uh, changes you made during uh, those conditions? Um, OK, thank you for your question. So. Like, so, um, well, some of the information is confidential, but I can tell what I can say is like, um, you can play around with the DNA amount, also play around with the temperature. And another thing is you probably can play around, around with the enhancer amount. Okay. okay, thank you for your question. And this is all what I can say. Thank you, Ellie. Um, uh, another question we have is, do you, you uh, try different tag placements, um, such as like the five prime or the three prime end or in between? Oh, okay. Thank you for the question. Uh, actually, that's a really good question. Um, it's quite important to know at which end you like to put your tag there. Um, so for mammalian expression and in gene script, we only express like secreted protein. So we, we will secrete a protein to the supernatants. And what we have there is like you have a signal peptide at the end terminal. So if you are going to put a tag at the end terminal, you're going to think about the whether the tag gonna affect the secretion. Okay, and another thing is 
Sometimes, if we have small tag at the end terminal, like a his tag or flag tag, and it would be good to have a linker between the his tag and your tag, uh, your uh, target protein. This is because the end terminal usually is not well exposed, so very likely your tag will not be exposed. In that way, even though your protein is expressed, you probably cannot be, uh, they cannot be purified later. So for the C terminal end, it's always, it usually is like well exposed and there's no need to have a like extra linker. And uh, also another thing is thinking about your protein size. If your protein is relatively small, again, like you don't want to, you probably will like to have a linker between your protein and a tag. And we do have some, and on the other hand, the tag position can uh, may cause aggregation to your protein. And we do encounter a case like we change it. Uh, at the beginning, we have the tag at the end terminal domain and the protein aggregated. So we change it to the C terminal domain. Uh, sorry, C terminal ends, and immediately we got tons of protein expressed and uh, no aggregation at all. So really depends on your protein and the depends on what kind of issue you encountered. Hope this answers your question and thank you. Thank you, Dr. Liu. That was very, that was great. Um, we have another question. Um, so usually uh, when doing transfection, it's recommended that the confluency is usually about 70%. So I guess in the high density system, how do you kind of work to allow a higher confluency of cells for transfection? Oh, uh, thank you for your question. And well, <laughs> um, this one is a quite a specific question, and I, I think I will. I'm not the best person to answer this question, and we will uh, remember this question as I will pass this question to our specialist on the cell culture and uh, when you meet the team person and we will get uh, get back to you like by email and answer your question. Thank okay. you. Perfect, thank you. I will make a note of that question. Um, and then one last question we have is, uh, how do you usually get higher dense, uh, high density uh, for toxic proteins? Okay, thank you for the question. And so I'm not sure I understand this question. So high density of the protein or toxic protein from high density cells, because when I talking about high density is the density of cell, not the protein. So I guess probably you are saying how to reach maximum expression level of a toxin protein from high density system. Uh, the thing is, if your protein is toxic, then the cell won't grow, right? So what do you want to do is you want to, um, you don't want to do the protein be expressed immediately, then the cell is dead, but the cell do have some tolerancy to the protein. And also, uh, what you can do is you can try to try some method to remove your targeted protein from the culture like you change the media, then the, the cell won't suffer from the toxic protein. Another thing is we have some examples like the protein will be expressed, the, the, the toxic protein has like, uh, oh sorry, the toxic protein has active and in, inactive form. So what we can do is we express and purify the inactive form and activate once we purify them outside the cell. Uh, thank you. Okay. Hope this helps. Yeah. Yes, uh, it did. So um, thank you very much, Dr. Liu, for answering all the questions in your wonderful talk. Um, as everyone can see, there's just a quick poll uh, just for um, GenScript to kind of know like what service you find more useful so we can help plan more webinars based on that. So if everyone can go ahead and just quickly fill it in. 
Um, if there's any more questions or um, if anybody needs anything at all, feel free to give uh, to contact us. Um, particularly, my email uh, should be at the end of all the emails, uh, but it's S H A L I S um, A as an apple at genscript.com. So feel free to go ahead and email me with any questions. And I think if that is all we have today, I think, oh, I think um, if you have any more questions, again, please put it in the question box so I can go ahead and read. But if there are no more questions, we'll go ahead and just say goodbye to everybody and thank you very much for attending our talk today.